Hi, this is Anita, the Global Trade Gal. Today I want to talk a little bit about the efficient supply chain. Now anyone that is in the global economy or is looking to do global business needs to be concerned about the efficiency of their entire supply chain. This is because a well-functioning supply chain is also an efficient supply chain and can make all the difference in profitability or the lack of profitability. So any company that's invested in the global economy should be concerned about the efficiency and also be concerned about the supply chain. But here's the deal. You know, an effective supply chain is not the same as an efficient supply chain. You know, a company can have an effective supply chain. They could have people that are able to get the orders out. They're able to ship things out to the customers on a relatively timely manner, and they're able to make a, a decent profit. But it does not mean they have the most efficient supply chain. An efficient supply chain is one that's able to do all these things, is get the orders out on time, get things shipped, get things on to the consumer, and they're able to do it efficiently. An efficient supply chain will be able to do more with what they have and they'll be able to do it quicker and do it with less errors than just an effective supply chain. There are several key metrics that can be looked at in your supply chain. And this is really important for, I think, anyone that's in business. These are all things that we should all be looking at in our businesses. The first one is time. You know, time would be something like, how long does it take for you to ship something to a customer? How long does it take someone to process an order? How long does it take to get orders out to vendors? This would be all the different things you look at would have to do with time, whether it be on-time processes, on-time purchases, um, on-time order processing, the fulfilling of the orders. All aspects of the time in the supply chain and how quickly and efficiently you're able to do it. The other would be cost. And of course, cost is a very easy metric. You know, we could, we all look at cost in business and you can see how, but an efficient supply chain will not just look at the cost or the profit and loss or the profitability, but they'd look at things like how much are they wasting or what can they save on or how can they manage inventory? They would be looking at ways that they could keep the cost low and not just make money, but also be able to save money. The third metric is quality. And this, of course, is another very important metric that it would be how well are you able to produce the goods at the quality that's required? How well are you able to supply the customers with quality products that don't have an issue? And how many returns do you have? Because, of course, things like returns or issues or problems can actually kill a business before it even gets started. So, you know, quality is also one of the metrics that has to do with how efficient your entire supply chain is. A well-oiled supply chain would be one where the time, the costs, the quality are all under control and running as efficiently as is possible. You know, efficiency is when a company will use their resources the best way possible to ensure the fastest yet the smoothest running of all of their systems. As I was um, writing a blog about an efficient supply chain, I was really surprised to be able to learn some things about the global food industry. Now, I am not in the food industry. So this for me was extremely interesting and in basically how inefficient it was the food industry is. And this is from an article from the Washington Post, and it is a little bit dated. It's in 2018. So it's it's not, you know, it's too bad. It's a few years ago. But it was a, um, in this article, the Washington Post wrote and said, according to the UN Food and Agricultural Organization, 30% of food is wasted globally across the supply chain, contributing 8% of the total global greenhouse gas emissions. If food waste were a country, it would come in third after the United States and China in terms of the impact on global warming. Yeah, that's really like, uh, that to me is, is really some amazing numbers that the, um, the way to be able to take food across the world or to globally supply food, there's a 30% of the food is wasted globally. 
And you know, that doesn't even take into account the carbon dioxide and all the other, you know, gases which happen due to frig- the refrigeration, which is going, you know, from, you know, one country to another, going from one ship to another, you know, and all of that that's emitted. Or the, you know, the food that, um, you know, then you can't forget all the metal cans, the plastic bags, the cardboard boxes that our food comes in. You know, by, you know, by, you know the fact that, you know, people may throw away half a lasagna or, you know, whatever it is, that, that that's also a bit of the food waste that's going on. It just seems to me like it, it shows that, you know, like this, some people may say, well, you know, this is, this is, you know, it's effective. I mean, we're getting food on our tables, you know, pretty much, you know, here in the United States, a lot of other places, though, recently we have started to see some shortages in it. But at the same time, is it the most effective supply chain as possible? And I would say that it is not, that the food industry has a lot of work to do to be able to lower it down from 30% to have a very minimal amount of waste, especially when we're living in a world where people are starving around the world. That is a great example of an effective supply chain that is not efficient. Because an efficient supply chain would be one that would make the optimal use of all the resources, including the cost, including wastage, including technology, including the human, the financial, and the physical. An efficient supply chain would do everything they could to make sure that their resources were working at the optimal level. You know, and as I look at this and as I was writing this blog, you know, I've been working with the global supply chain now for many years, and I will be the first one to admit that a lot of this sounds really great, but it's not as easy as it sounds. You know, sometimes, especially when you're working in Asia, to get the efficiency out is not as easy as it may sound. It can be difficult because you're working with, um, like, for example, at Maduro, in my work, we will work a lot with the villages outside of Hanoi, Vietnam. And the people in the villages have been making these products for hundreds of years. So, yes, they have they're they're effective in that they understand the product's quality. Are they always efficient? No. You know, do they always use the latest technology? No. Do they even understand it? No. Um, you know, I mean, do they have computers? Some of them don't have. Do they understand about invoicing? Some of them do. Some of them don't. You know, so it's effective in the sense that you're able to get the products out. But is it efficient? No. So one of the challenges many times when you're working in global trade is that you may want to build the most efficient company that you can, that you really want to have efficient staff, you want to train them up, but you might be working against culture, education, and other things, which can make it very difficult. And that is where the challenge comes. And that's where I believe that as a trader in especially a third world country, you need to go in to this and believe in that you are going to educate, you are going to train, you are going to teach, you are going to help people to become more efficient. And the reason why I'm a great believer in that is because if you don't take that attitude and if you expect everyone to understand exactly what you want, then you are going to very quickly be disappointed. You are going to be disappointed because it is not easy. It simply is not very easy. You know, it's difficult when you're working with somebody who maybe, you know, doesn't really understand email. So you have to go over there and you have to kind of talk to them and, you you know, it it becomes hard. It is not efficient. Um, Can it be effective? Yes, it can be effective in the sense that if they're really able to produce what you need at the quality you need and at the price you need then yes, it's effective, but is it efficient? No. And that's really where the challenge comes in, in global trade, that you always have this fighting or this tug of war, I believe, between what is effective and efficient. So the only way you can be able to break down those barriers is if you go in with the understanding that you need to educate, that you need to teach, 
and that you need to build. And if you do that, then you can start to break down those barriers between the e efficiency and effectiveness that you can actually become efficient and not just be effective. There are some things that I think that companies can do to help ensure that they become more efficient. And especially when you are working in a third world or a developing country. And some of the things that I believe you can do is one is technology. Technology is, of course, one of the most important driving factors in the supply chain today. You can actually take the time and to help people to be able to learn some of the latest technology so they can become more efficient. For example, in Vietnam, my staff use an app which is called Zalo. I personally don't use it because I have WhatsApp and I have some other apps, but it's basically a WhatsApp and everybody there uses Zalo. And so even if our vendors maybe don't use computers or don't really know how to use them, they have a mobile phone and they can use Zalo. So that can help us to become more efficient and more effective. You know, today in today's world in the supply chain, things are moving a lot with artificial intelligence, the cloud, computers, machine learning. These are all really important things for an efficient company to be able to look at. And it's also, I understand it's a hard thing to be able to embrace these technologies and to understand them because there can always be this gap between knowledge and understanding. And especially if you're a small company, yeah, that's why many times I feel like I have to wear so many hats being a small business overseas. You know, I have to be able to understand a bit about technology. You have to understand about quality. You have to understand about accounting. You need to understand all these many, many different things. And you really have to be able to wear many, many hats to be able to work globally and work in the supply chain. And it's also important, too, though, at the same time that you keep up and you understand some of the technology that is happening, because this technology in the end is going to change the supply chain and change the world. And you want to try to be ahead of it or if not ahead of it, at least be going together with it. The next one is the human resources. Many years ago, I, I look back at this time and I think about one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in business was at one time when I just kept growing and growing my company with people. And at one time we had over 50 people and I would say that probably half of them were really working. And it can be really easy when you're overseas and you're working in another country and maybe you're not getting the efficiency that you think you should and you're not being as effective as you think you should. So then you just start hiring people and you think that somehow this next person is going to be the person that's going to help and make a difference. And the hard lesson which I learned is it didn't make a difference at all. In fact, it just ended up costing me a lot of money. And a lot of countries like, for example, in Vietnam or China, once you hire someone, it can be very difficult to fire them. So one of the most expensive cost for most companies is human power or their employees. So an efficient supply chain or a company that's efficient will look at this and ensure that their employees are well-trained and that they'll use the latest technology and they won't just keep adding on more people to try to do the job or suddenly you have three people doing the job that one person should be able to do. Instead, they would be smart enough to get that one person to do it, even if they had to pay them a bit more. But they would understand that that one person would be more valuable than three people who really don't understand or know what they're doing. You know, many times in manufacturing today still need human beings and they still need them to be able to make the products. But an efficient supply chain will look at ways and they will train up their employees, so the best trained and the most efficient employees that they can. Recently, my office and I, we started using Microsoft Teams and I was kind of a little bit leery, I will admit, because sometimes introducing new technology has been a little bit difficult. There's always been kind of this long learning curve and I've had to sort of like make sure everyone can really understand and sort of train everyone. But I have been surprised, like actually to tell you the truth, my team has really embraced it and they probably have embraced it more than I have. But I 
learned an important lesson in this that you can't be afraid to learn technology and give people the opportunity to be able to use that technology because it can really make a difference. And I would have to say that Microsoft Teams has helped to make us more efficient and has helped us to collaborate better and have better teamwork. Now, I'm not putting in a plug here for Microsoft Teams because there's lots of other companies that do the same thing. But I am making a point and say that an efficient company, an efficient person supply chain will use all the technology that they can in the most efficient way possible. And my next point in ways that a company can do to ensure that they're efficient is streamlining. I think that streamlining today is one of the most important aspects of the business process. It means to be able to streamline the business to to be able to have unnecessary waste. I pointed out before about the global food industry and the tremendous waste that they have that 30% of all food is wasted globally. That certainly is an industry that needs to be streamlined more to find a way to more efficiently and effectively to be able to get the food from the supplier to the table. So when we talk about the efficient supply chain, this should be the goal that anyone who's in the global economy should have. They should be looking at the company and looking at the supply chain and saying, what can we do to not be just effective, but to also be efficient? Because if you do that, I promise you that then you'll slowly begin to see things which will ensure that you are becoming more efficient than you have been before. And that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. It's about taking those steps one by one, and it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be a long process. It's going to be a constant effort to be able to have the most efficient supply chain possible. I believe it's not some destination that you're going to suddenly arrive at and then you won't have to do anything else. It is going to be a constant, ongoing learning process. And especially today as technology is changing, it is going to be changing ever more. And to remain efficient, you are going to have to be someone who will be willing to change, adjust, or do what's ever needed to ensure that you have the most efficient supply chain as possible. I hope that you've enjoyed this. And this is Anita from the Global Trade Gal from Mindoro. And those of you who may not know me, I have lived and worked in Asia for over 30 years and been in supply chain. So when I started out, it was very inefficient and very ineffective. And, you know, I remember uh, going into one office, there's still some telex machines. And certainly we were working a lot with fax machines and everything was on paper. So today, in today's world, With the internet and technology, it's really a wonderful time to be a global trader and to be part of this wonderful global economy. And let's all try to work to become as efficient as we can for our supply chain to make the global economy be a very efficient place to work. Thank you so much for listening. We hope that you've enjoyed this podcast and If you've enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up and recommend it to somebody who might be able to use this information or use these thoughts about global trade. I will be the first one to admit that global trade is not always easy, and but it can also be one of the most fun and one of the most rewarding things that you ever do. Thank you so much for listening and have a great week.